Hey guys, it's Bro you Whack, and as you guys might remember, a couple of days ago, I made a video talking about the 2019 archive event expectations. I talked about the start date, I talked about a possible campaign and what we should get for the game mode, but also I talked about some skin ideas. However, in that video, I did mention that I was going to make a video just dedicated to talking about skin ideas and also featuring your guys' comments, because while I do have some ideas, there are a lot of people with other ideas that they would love to see in the game, along with reminding me of some actual skins that we've got kind of seen in comics and cinematics and lore that I want to make a video just talking about it and really just getting you hyped up because again the archive event is the one event that I feel like they're just gonna heavily deliver on I'm talking about skins talking about the game mode possibly even a map like oh there's so much however today let's talk about some skins so this first skin I want to talk about is a skin that I already mentioned before but I know I'm gonna get tons of comments saying oh bro you wacky forgot this skin you forgot this skin even though I literally mentioned in my last video and it's gonna be talent Batiste. It's pretty obvious as to why we're probably going to be getting Talon Batiste, an event that literally glorifies organizations like Overwatch, Blackwatch, and Talon, along with a new hero coming out that once was affiliated with Talon. It would be stupid as to not get Talon Batiste. Plus, it could be a simple epic skin, a filler skin, a first event skin for a new hero, but along with another set of skins that I don't know why people aren't talking about more often, and these are all the Masquerade skins. If you guys don't remember, the Masquerade comic that pretty much had formal Doomfist came also Ballroom Widowmaker in a sexy purple dress, along with Joker Sombra and Fluffy Red Boy Reaper. I don't know why people aren't talking about these skins, because these skins are flame, dog. Alright, but let's move on to some actual ideas that I haven't mentioned before. And the first skin idea that I saw constantly in my comments section of my last video is going to be Deadlock McCree. Now the concept of Deadlock McCree would be perfect for this event because we already know of his affiliation with Blackwatch and Overwatch with his Blackwatch skin and his classic skin, but we haven't really seen too much of his past life. I don't want to say past life, but his life before Blackwatch. And as you guys know, he was a part of the Deadlock gang that has Ash, that has Bob, that has all these these refugees that just kind of formed a family, but we haven't really seen too much of it. So him being represented in his past with his deadlock outfit or his deadlock uniform would be perfect for the up and coming archive event. And I'm pretty sure he'd look like a sexy dad, bro. <laughs> I don't know if he would have a black leather jacket with a deadlock gang emblem on the back or if they would actually cut off his sleeves off of the leather jacket. Like, he would look BAAF, but... I don't know what he would look like because we haven't really seen what he looked like in his deadlock gang era. <laughs> now this next skin idea is going to be for my main girl Widowmaker and even though I would love to see Ballroom Widow, we probably won't see it for whatever reason. I, I actually don't know why. Maybe Blizzard forgot they made the Masquerade comic, but the skin idea is going to be Wedding Widowmaker. So if you guys remember back in 2017 with the original Uprising event, Widowmaker did get a spray that portrayed her in her earlier life. We already got the Talon Widowmaker skin which still portrayed her in her pasty white skin before she became a cold-blooded killer literally because she has blue skin but this skin idea would be an even farther callback to her younger days because if you guys don't know this spray represents her marrying this guy I don't know his name off the top of my head but it was just her normal life before she became a sniper it was when she was a ballet dancer just living a normal life and that would be a perfect skin for an event that's supposed to glorify either younger days of some of these heroes that we come to know and love or just their original state and here it's it's literally her original state represented in the form of a wedding dress. I think it would just be perfect and I think it would be an adorable dress for a hero that is known to be very sassy, very, I'm not going to say the B word because we're PG here, but you get what I'm trying to say. It would be great, it would be beautiful, it would be amazing. So can we talk about a possible Brigida skin? I know, I, I know, okay? A lot of people hate Brigida and it's all because she has Bash, it's all because of goats and if you guys don't know, uh, to kill Brigida, just shoot the shield. It's that simple. Shoot the shield and she's dead. All jokes aside though, this next skin idea is going to be for Brigida and I'm kind of surprised we didn't get this. And this is going to be casual Brigida. A lot of players appreciate the skins that portray heroes in a lot more casual light or wearing streetwear or just wearing normal clothes. Talk about casual Hanzo, Pajama Mei, or in this case, casual Brigida. But still very fitting for an event that's supposed to glorify stories from Overwatch and Blackwatch and whatnot because this is a callback from the original 
Reinhardt series where we got our first look at Brigitte. She's not wearing any armor, she's not wearing any of her gear, she's just wearing normal clothes. And I'm somewhat surprised that we haven't gotten this type of skin, even though, like, yes, when it comes to the legendary skin mechanic, I think that's the name of it, it kind of looks like it, but it's not. It's really not. When you compare the two skins, she's wearing armor still, she has her bandana along with glasses, the casual Brigitte skin would just be her normal lounging clothes. So a hero that is known to wear armor literally everywhere, say on the battlefield, say at the carnival, say in the bathroom, or even in the bedroom when you're trying to like, 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 <laughs> And over here, I think I'm a PG champ. You know what I mean? This casual Brigitte skin would be a nice change of pace, but still very fitting of the theme of the Uprising slash Archive event, which is organizations or just a callback to sprays or, or comics or cinematics that we have seen in the past. Now, even though Brigitte is a hero that people mainly just hate on, this next hero is a hero that everyone loves and everyone hates and everyone loves to hate, and it's going to be the homegirl D.Va, and this is going to be Battled Scar D.Va. Once again, another cinematic inspired skin. This this is at the very end of her cinematic where she's actually all battle scarred after she just fought a bunch of robots. I'm, next, I'm not really too sure what they're called. She's wearing a cast on not only her foot but also her arm plus her mech is also deconstructed. It's still being rebuilt but this is a skin concept that I like because again it's portraying D.Va in a different light but also portraying her mech in a different light because so many people want a D.Va skin but they constantly forget about her giant robot that's behind her. Where as this skin, again, it's still a lore inspired skin. It's a cinematic specific skin that would fit the theme, but also make D.Va less girly or less kawaii, more kind of heroic or whatnot. Because when it comes to like Black Cat D.Va or when it comes to Cruiser D.Va, it's still fitting that kawaii girly look. This. It's literally named Battle Scar Diva. She's wearing a cast and still kicking butt, bruh. That's why I really like it. Some people would want the like the first scene skin where she's wearing the hat and also that black mecha jacket. And while that skin would be cool, it's only her that would be different. Unless they would completely destroy her mecha, it wouldn't really make sense of a skin because it's basically just her classic skin, just her wearing a hat and black jacket. This at least would be a totally different look for both sides of D.Va. But wanna know what skin we absolutely need? We need an Ash skin, a legendary Ash skin. And once again, this is an origin inspired skin. If you're sick of these, well, you have to understand what's coming up. An archive event that has archive archives of past heroes past looks. This is Ash Formal and Butler Bob. We all know the true hero here is Bob, alright? We want to see Bob skins, not really Ashing the Bob skins. Thick boy Bob. We all love Bob. We all want to see Golden Bob in different outfits. Put him in a butler suit. Put him in an all black suit <laughs> and you make 90% of all the gamer boys just and Ash, I, I really didn't know what to do for Ash. Like, I'm being serious here and say I just want to see Butler Bob. But when it comes to Ash, I guess we can make her a little bit more formal. I don't know if they would give her a more dress-like suit outfit. Or in the actual cinematic, they would give her that schoolgirl outfit. Because if you guys don't know in the origin story, she does come from a very rich family. Which is why they have a butler named Bob. So, I think a more classy look as if she's going to school. A private school more specifically would be a nice touch to Butler Bob, which is the main show here. <laughs> and finally, another origin inspired skin that I'm surprised we haven't gotten along with Scientist Winston is going to be Laboratory Mora. So I already talked about Scientist Winston, how we have to get Lab Coat Monkey, yada yada yada, but again, there's another scientist in this game that is Mora that once was working for Overwatch. And if you guys haven't watched the origin story, basically, she's just a scientist working for Overwatch. She's making experience experiments and whatnot, and of course, with every scientist, you need a lab coat. Well, if they're not gonna bring Scientist Winston, a hero that does have a good handful of skins, at least bring Laboratory Mora, because she needs more legendary skins, or at least an epic skin that portrays her in her previous life, a uh, life that involved Overwatch, that still has a part of her represented with the skin, which is her being a scientist. Those are some of my favorite skins, because it's still keeping the theme of the hero, which is Mora being a 
scientist, but is extremely fitting for the event that we are celebrating. In this case, it's the original stories of Overwatch or Blackwatch or Talon or whatever hero that we're talking about. So that's why I think this would be a very fitting skin. And that's why I think all of these skins would be fitting. Some would be more fitting than others. Like, yes, we might not get Battle Scar Diva because we literally got a skin from that cinematic, which was the Diva Nano Cola skin. And we might not get Ashmore Moore and Butler Bob because for whatever reason. But some of these skins, Blizzard knows we would love, or at least I hope they know that we would love. And especially in the third year of Overwatch, a year of events where they know they can't work too hard or at least come up with some ideas that might not work. All of these ideas, like literally all of these ideas would work. Yes, some more than others, but... I really hope they deliver on this event, and especially on the skins, because when it comes to the skins, if they bring fire skins like they did for the 2018 Halloween event, a lot of people will not disregard the event, because yes, they might bring a game mode that might not work out, but when it comes to the skins, this is the first thing that people care about and will fall in love with an event, and all of these ideas would be flames, so anyway guys, I love you guys, thank you guys for watching, more Overwatch videos to come, and bye.